My name is Cheryl Gottemuller, and I live here in San Fernando Valley. And I'm an artist, and you're in my home. You're gonna see a life-size fiberglass horse that I got the opportunity to paint for the Arts and Education Committee of the Greater Valley Glen Council. The Horses Across the Valley program as part of the Public Art Initiative of the Museum of the San Fernando Valley. We also have an alliance partner in the Valley Arts Alliance and is part of the San Fernando Valley Art and Cultural Center. We sent out literally thousands of invitations, received 14 requests for the packets, five were actually vetted, and Cheryl won us over. Where I started was down here with the poppy, the golden, the California golden poppy is the state flower. So I thought, well, they, they grow to about three feet in height, so I was envisioning a horse galloping through a poppy field. Up here we have the bridle made up of the 170 and the 101 freeway, and then all the little patches representing the neighborhoods of the area. Tongva Indian, which I guess they are also called the Gabrieleno, were the native tribe for this area of San Fernando Valley. The Indians used the abalone conch shell in their everyday uses and also in their uh, jewelry and clothing. They also had a lot of the rattlesnake diamond that you'd find in their pottery. So I thought, well, we'll pull, pull in some of the rattlesnake and then there's some going up the spine of the horse from the tail. There was a selection process in terms of what animal made most sense and it was hands down that horses was the one and only animal uh, for the program. Why? Because it has such a rich history from the Spaniards that brought the horses into the valley to all the Mexican rancheros and the missions that used the horses, all the way to, of course, the Western film. Virtually every major Western film you know, had horses and was filmed out in the western part of the valley. We had 78,000 horses in the late 1700s in the valley. So it was way more populated by horses. So they have a great history here. Uh, the breeding facilities in the 1930s and 40s were the largest ones west of Kentucky. This weird thing happened though, once I got started, about a week into it, I managed to fall down a flight of steps and um, snapped my wrist. So that was kind of devastating because this is my very first public art grant and I was really excited about this. And then I had a broken wrist and I'm right-handed. But anyways, I had a cast up to here and I started working with my left hand and eventually was able to paint pretty good with the left hand. The San Fernando Valley spine flower was native to the San Fernando for hundreds of years. It's almost become extinct in the last 100 years. But in 1999, um, a botanist did discover some of the spine flowers, so we're trying to bring awareness to that. The spine flower, they're like the size of your fingernail. They're tiny little ground cover kind of plants that vine out. So then I did like a magnification of it up here. So this is a blow up of the spine flower and you'll see it has um, six petals, like a top layer of three and then the second layer of three more. So you have six. And underneath the blossom, then you have these spiny things. And that's the spiny bracts are how it gets its name from the San Fernando Valley spine flower. Then it has the long leaves that are gold and green and reddish tone like that. On the back leg, we have the 405 freeway. And I put freeways in different places because that's the lifeblood of San Fernando Valley. It brings people, commerce, it's a movement of energy. It's like an artery in a body. It moves a lot of stuff. Our project will be to bring the horse to the elementary schools and to the high school in the area to bring that history, that rural history, to the children so that they're aware of what was here in the past. This side of the horse is what I call like the present day side of the horse. It represents uh, all the people that have moved to the valley or grown up here that are here to fulfill their dreams. They want to build a company, uh, become an artist, an actor, a musician, whatever. They come here and they live here because the energy, there's a lot of creative energy here in the San Fernando Valley. And so this California Scarlet Peninstem plant, which is native to the area also, um, the blossoms, they, they grow, they're nurtured like in a garden, and then they take flight like your, like your dreams, like your wishes, like the career you want to build, the company you want to build. And as they take, a, take flight, then the dreamer up here is welcoming the dreams into existence in society. And then eventually, the blossoms become an airplane right on the ear there. That's to pay tribute to the aviation and aerospace industry that was so prominent here and still is here in the valley. And um, it played a big part in World War II and kept people employed and brought a lot of development. So I kind of wanted to make sure there's some tribute to that. Back here we have the eye with the energy. So it's the eye of the soul. And it's all the energy and momentum and the spirit that goes into the dreamers who want to make their careers.
take flight. We want to uh, get all the artists of the San Fernando Valley involved, and we want them to adorn these horses, and we want to put them in prominent locations throughout the San Fernando Valley. I think it's time for the valley to be recognized for the arts. Um, we've been pushed aside and called a cultural wasteland for long enough, and I think it's time for everybody to realize that we've got a lot going on here as far as the arts are concerned. Mm -hmm.